Okay, the next presentation is from uh, the Life Comp Olive Project, entitled Automotive and Furniture Biocomposite Prototype Parts with 40% of Reinforcing Wood Fibers from Olive Tree Pruning Waste. And this will be presented by Dr. Juan Pablo Ferrer. Uh, Juan Pablo has Hello, a... Nice Hi, 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 hang on. <laughs> uh, has a PhD in renewable energy from the US University of Hein and is an accredited assistant lecturer. Juan Pablo has research experience with prestigious institutions such as Valeo, Fraunhofer, and Exeter University, with the main topics of research including circular economy and the polymer and polymer biocomposites. Okay, Juan Pablo, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So, should I share my screen? Yes. Uh, yes, oh. please. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, can you? Yes, you can see it. Yes, we can see. Uh, uh, if, you, if you want to put change it to reading mode. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's perfect. Oh. Thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation to this event. Uh, so the, the idea of this, on this project is a, a live uh, project in the uh, live program, but in relation to the applications of biocomposite uh, uh, for industrial parts in the automotive and in the furniture sectors. So um, this project is finishing this year in November. Uh, and also, you are welcome for presenting uh, another presentation in in the workshop on the the 14th of November. And so the idea is to uh, take the olive tree pruning waste, which has no use uh, at the moment, to produce uh, biocomposites. And we have two direct benefits. On one hand we avoid the burning of this waste in the field, which was a traditional practice before, and we substitute fossil-based raw material in plastics. So in the picture on the left, you see the typical landscape in Jaén, where there are millions of olive trees. Then the olive tree uh, pruning uh, waste is uh, around that, uh, that uh, rose, but this is typically shredded or burned. And our idea is to produce uh, biocomposite. So you can see uh, the small fibers on the picture on the left. After the uh, reduction of the size of the pruning by milling in several steps, we obtain these small fibers. And we can mix them with, for example, recycled polypropylene or polylactic acid. This is an example of recycled polypropylene. And uh, after uh, some processes, we obtain the uh, biocomposite. And you can see the detail of the fibers in the composite. This is a good point because it can have a, can have a, a, a vintage uh, aspect. And this is maybe good for the marketing. So this uh, project is uh, coordinated by Andaltech and the consortium included three, uh, four, sorry, uh, end users. One of them is four motor company in Germany. We have two French end users, Plasturia and Caliplas, and Matriceria Peña in Spain. Plasturia and Caliplas uh, uh, produce uh, furniture, Matriceria Peña, um, urban furniture by extrusion, and for, of course, automotive parts. In the field of research, we have the University of Jaén and Citoliva, which is a, also a technology center in relation to the olive in research. So we have a Ford motor company in, in Aachen, in Germany, Plasturia and Caliplas in La Planche, in France, Matriceria Peña in Illora, Granada, Spain, and Daltec is the uh, coordinator at the University of Jaén. Uh, between Andaltec and the University, there are uh, 30 kilometers uh, of distance. 
And Citolila is also in the province of Jaén. Um, so the motivation of the the project is to is in three or can be can be in a, a split a split in three different uh, ideas. So environmental, techno-economic, and social. Uh, from the environmental point of view, we want to demonstrate the valorization of the olive pruning residue and create or uh, produce a more sustainable material. From the techno-economic point of view, uh, we have developed eight different bicomposites at the laboratory scale, may maybe some, some more of them, and four of them to uh, were scaled up. And in total, we have produced um, almost one ton of biocomposites. Okay, this is the, the target for this project. And we have produced uh, three real uh, prototyping demonstrators. And we transfer this uh, technology, this idea, this know-how to stakeholders. In the social, from the social point of view, we uh, we want to have more implication from the policy make policy maker sector and also from the farmers. So the the project uh, was developed firstly on a, a laboratory scale. Uh, mm, so on the left you can see the how we got uh, olive tree pruning, then we developed the biocomposite at the laboratory scale, but then the important point of, in this project is the scale up of in this uh, production. So up to almost one ton of uh, biocomposite. Uh, we have produced the prototypes, the end user have, uh, have produced the prototypes. And we are now, uh, analyzing the possibilities of replicability and transferability into other markets. An example, to have a, a view of these uh, ideas, some examples of pictures when we were taking the, the olive pruning. So this, uh, that this was on rows. We used conventional machinery to reduce the size in the field, etc. So the idea is to uh, that we can take a huge amount of olive uh, pruning, we can reduce the size. But the important point in the from the from the technical point of view is the chemical treatment because we um, optimize the uh, properties of the biocomposite uh, as a function of the requirements, and then we have to tune the granulometry of the uh, olive fibers and also the uh, conditions of the chemical treatment. So the concentration of reagents, the temperature, etc. And this is a, a, a process of optimization by design of experiment. Uh, and so we, we got the, the requirement. These some pictures are, uh, represent the different processes on the top, you can see the chemical treatment at the laboratory scale. And in the middle, we can see the, the compounding. So this is this uh, figure represents an extruder where we mix the fibers with the um, recycled polypropylene flakes and some additive in order to obtain the biocomposite with the required um, mechanical uh, and other properties. So, and when then we pel uh, make a pellet of this material. These pellets can be used uh, in an injection molding machine, like uh, in the, on the bottom, you see the, the figure. And we can obtain plates or, and also uh, probes. These probes were characterized in laboratory to, to uh, verify the properties. And then, so once we have the okay from the end users, we can we could uh, produce the or they could produce the the prototypes. So in this case, for 
uh, propose two different uh, prototypes. One of them is this uh, food rest, okay? And it uh, meets all the mechanical requirements. And also a, a very huge part, which is this uh, trunk trim, okay? Um, you cannot see maybe the, the fibers here, but if, if you see the real part, you, will, you can see, you are able to see the, the fibers. And these parts, these prototype parts were produced in the same uh, injection machines as the, the serial uh, parts fabrication. So this is not uh, any modification wasn't needed. So the, the, the production is the same. In the case of furniture, Matriceria Peña ha, has uh, built this, uh, this bench with some profiles with, uh, uh, made out this um, by composite. And Plasturia is, uh, has this um, home furniture material. One important thing is that um, also the, the weight of this uh, parts is reduced in comparison to all the, 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 the polymer matrix, matrix itself because the, the fibers have lower density and they are included in this uh, part uh, in a 40% in a uh, proportion. So we have a, a, a reduction in, in weight and also the aspect is interesting uh, some kind of vintage aspect. This is good maybe for marketing purposes. So this, this project, um, in in relation to the, the innovation and, and marketability, uh, is also uh, successful as it was recognized by by the innovation radar of the European Commission. You can see it in the web page as a business ready. Okay. And if we think uh, in an estimation of the size of the market, the biocomposite market, this is huge enough in order to, to think in this solution, not only from the scientific point of view, but also from a, a, a investment point of view. This could be a, a very interesting option for investment. For example, the market potential. Uh, you can see in this uh, picture on the right, this is the uh, Spain and the uh, communities. Uh, in the south, you, we have Andalusia. Uh, in, in, in Andalusia, uh, we have the highest concentration of olive trees in the world. So we have, uh, but in total in Spain, we have more than 2 million hectares of olive groups. And it is estimated that per year, we can have available 1.5 tons of olive pruning. Okay, this is per hectare. Um, so if we make the calculation, we can have more than 3.5 million tons of olive tree pruning waste per year available in Spain. So a huge amount of biomass. And if we, let's say if we put um, just to have uh, raw, uh, rough calculations, 50% uh, of uh, fibers in biocomposites, and uh, we can have um, one euro per kilogram, let's say, of this biocomposite, just to have a, a, an idea of the, the total revenue. If we make the calculations, we are in more than 3 million euros per year. So this is a very rough uh, calculation, but just it is useful to have an idea of the potential of this uh, waste, if we can use it for uh, producing a high added value material like this by composite. So this is, um, we hope that in future, in, in following years, this could be 
a, a benefit, economic benefit for farmers. At the moment, they have to pay for shredding this uh, uh, pruning, but at least if they don't have to pay money for that, it is good for them. Or if they can sell this biomass, it would be much better. Um, this, the use of this uh, material in, is following the principles of circular economy, and this means competitive advantages in comparison to other materials. So we have more sustainable material, and also we can fulfill European directives, like uh, one in relation to the automotive sector, because uh, car makers are obliged to use more quantity of recycled material in the in the vehicles. Okay. And in relation to local jobs, this is very important, the, the, the future of this project, because um, the, the idea of biorefineries close to the olive group where we can process uh, the biomass and chemically treat uh, biomass, etc. This means local jobs and also higher value jobs by uh, for those uh, engineers uh, that design the, the optimization of the biocomposites as a function of the requirements from the end user. So we can see seven uh, competitive advantages. On the first one is maybe obvious, but it's also very important. We don't we don't know uh, we don't need to to have more olive trees to supply the, the industry. We, ha we have a huge amount of olive uh, trees in, in Spain and also in other Mediterranean countries. Um, there is a, one opportunity by designing special machinery for re reducing the size of the pruning, but at the moment with conventional machinery, it is possible. Um, we expect uh, maybe uh, more expensive material, this biocomposite, than the conventional polymer, but not uh, too much. So it is uh, affordable for, for the industry. We can use the same extrusion technology, same compounders, et cetera, than those for conventional plastics. So we, ca we don't need to adapt the, 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 the machinery. Um, this, uh, this idea represents the basis of new business, uh, business models. Uh, and the idea is to be supplier of vinyl biocomposite. So the plastic industry could uh, produce this biocomposite um, by taking advantage of this uh, biomass. We can design uh, the biocomposite as a function of the end user requirements, uh, as I have explained before, and the, the potential market is huge enough to absorb this uh, material. So this is interesting for investment and uh, the, top, the maximum possible revenue is more than 3,000 million euro per year, which is high enough. So as, as a conclusion, we can have uh, the life company project is presented uh, and also it will finish uh, next, uh, next uh, month. Um, we have developed the biocomposite as they were required by the uh, end users. The scaling up is uh, demonstrated at this moment up to uh, one ton. In future steps, future projects, it would be interesting to go to 10, 20 or 30 tons of biocomposite per year. Uh, we are, uh, this is our idea. Um, the industrial prototypes are developed and they, they are as the end users uh, wanted. Uh, the market potential is demonstrated. Uh, since, uh, this project is a, a good idea for investment. Um, we can we can assure, ensure that we have some competitive advantages. So thank you for your attention. If you 
want to see the want to visit the web page you have there lifecompolit.eu and we have also uh, profiles in uh, social media linkedin in youtube we have a channel and we have also in twitter so if you have some questions please uh, put in contact with me or with my colleagues uh, if you have the contact and so you are welcome for our workshop on, on the 14th or uh, 14th of november okay, okay thank, thank you, you. Uh, any questions from the floor? Uh, yes, thank you for this interesting talk. Uh, I have one question, because I saw you use some biodegradable uh, polymers uh, in the biocomposites. Uh, does this really influence, also influence the degradability of the obtained uh, composite? Um. Yes, if we use uh, PLA, for example, it is can be uh, degraded by um, UV radiation. So it depends on, on the application. We can use a polymer matrix or another polymer matrix. So it depends. But it is possible to combine fibers with PLA or with PP or with other uh, polymer matrices. Yeah, another question related to the, um, the, the the use of these uh, uh, prunings. So, do they actually contribute towards the strength of the uh, biocomposite, or are they merely a filler? Uh, ah, yes, that's a good question. Maybe uh, it was my my fault not to explain it better. Uh, this is a reinforcement. So, they the the gel modulus can be doubled by the presence of these. Uh, small olive fibers and this is when we when we have 40 percent of a uh, proportion in weight of fibers if we change the proportion of if we change the granulometry or if we change the chemical treatment so we will get a different uh, value of for example gel modulus uh, but this was optimized and and yes this is this work fibers uh, work as a uh, reinforcement because in 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 some cases they use for instance glass fiber for this as well um, is is it comparable to that then the the properties uh, well i don't know um um what the properties with uh, glass fibers but um yeah, i guess if you want to to replicate some properties of other um, reinforcement, mm, you can do that by tuning the granulometry and the chemical treatment and also the, the proportion in the final biocomposite. So it is possible to to change the to to meet the requirements of the of the final material. So we, after producing some probes, you can measure them in the laboratory and you can follow a a design of experiment in order to uh, apply a, a statistical method to find the best combination of those parameters to have the requirements you you would like to have. Okay, so in the project you didn't necessarily compare it to a reference thing, you more uh, focused on achieving the characteristics that the producers demand? Yes, the, the, for example, for gave us some different uh, requirements and uh, for some different kind of uh, parts. Some parts we, for, we would have uh, very, very difficult requirements to, to be achieved and other parts are easier, okay? Or, so the, the requirements are lower. And, and for example, uh, for so, some parts would be visible or another parts in the car will be hidden. And if they are visible, they will have also requirements, so UV protection, for example. But at the end, uh, we could uh, meet those requirements. If we 
And once, if we want to have very, very difficult, uh, high requirements, uh, so maybe for some application, this material is not the best, but for many other parts in the, in the car, they are, they are suitable. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hi, Juan Pablo. Just a couple of quick questions uh, online. Uh, it says, do you use HTC or another chemical treatment, and if so, which one? Uh, the chemical treatment is um, in relation to removing the lignin content in, in the fibers. Um, but so this is a kind of know-how that we prefer to not to disclosure. Also, this is a, a fault on the other users uh, wouldn't like to disclosure. But the idea is to remove lignin and to preserve cellulose. Uh, you can use the chemical treatment that you would like to do. Uh, the only idea is efficiency, cost, um, so the convenience of in how you do that. But the specific uh, parameters, uh, I know it's better not to discuss Yeah, you're not willing to talk about them. Okay, no worries. And, and the final question, just very quickly. So they ask, so are you producing similar materials to carbon fibers, was their question. I, su I suppose similar to Tim's question about glass fibers. They serve the same purpose. Uh, uh, so the question is, if this material so, is the same? Yeah, the, if you're producing fibers similar to, to carbon, to carbon fibers, so lightweight, stronger, yeah. Um, I don't, I'm not sure about uh, <laughs> yeah. carbon fibers, sorry, but the idea is uh, these uh, small, small olive fibers get uh, so more or less aligned through the longitudinal uh, direction when they are injected in in the probes and in the in the real part. So they get they, they provide more geom uh, modulus to the part. Okay, and so this the, the fibers have a, a, the, the aspect ratio. So they are long and and thin, and this is a, a good property for uh, for the mechanical behavior. And so I don't know the the, the the glass how the glass fibers, but I'm not sure if I'm. No, <laughs> no, I, that, that, I think that's an, the answered the question. We, uh, okay. Well, thank you very much, Juan Pablo. Yeah, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Goodbye.